Today's Ask Reddit post, what's a NSFW detail about a historical figure that's normally left out of the history books? Oh boy, this is gonna be a good one, let's get started. Churchill was a bit of a nudist. He claimed to have some form of skin condition that made clothes uncomfortable to wear for long periods. When he visited the White House he would sit around naked while having discussions with FDR. FDR was such a ducking chad he probably stripped with him and compared dick sizes. Edit. I meant Theodore Roosevelt, not FDR. I like to imagine FDR remained clothed himself, but he never mentioned it and carried on official business as though nothing was abnormal. Benjamin Franklin liked to take air baths which meant sitting in the window of his London house with the windows open, totally nude. I have visited that very house, which is now a museum, and stood in that very window. They are big Georgian style windows and I suspect that anyone in the house opposite or possibly even glancing up from the street from the right angle direction would have seen the full founding father. He was also a stoner, an occultist, a drunk, he ducked a lot, and was a scientist. So he was kind of America's founding badass uncle, the other founders were all men in their 20s, while Franklin was in his 70s. He was the weird older guy hanging around with college kids. He was streets ahead. The great magician Houdini once escaped a prison cell while fully nude as to not hide anything to escape. However what the guards failed to check was that he hid a skeleton key in his ass checks. He was just too thick for them to notice the key. Finally, being dummy thick actually helps you evade the guards. He clenched, so his ass cheeks couldn't clap and alert the guard. I mean it's pretty well known, but not something that you'd be taught in school. JFK fucked. Obviously there was Marilyn Monroe, but apparently he also had a thing for prostitutes. That thing being his presidential penis. He has been quoted by a British Prime Minister as saying if I go 3 days without a lay I get a headache. So what you're saying is he must have gone 4 days without a lay and his head just did that. No not November. Somebody shot a load and it wasn't him. Leonardo da Vinci kept poems and jokes about penises. Kept, like had a collection of, or did he write them? He wrote them. Kept a few in his journals. So he's like Jonah Hill's character from Superb at filling all his journals full of dicks. During 1942 in a war planning visit to Washington, a British delegation including Winston Churchill stayed at the White House. The president wheeled into Churchill's bedroom one afternoon to discover the prime minister stalking the room in the nude, puffing on a cigar as he dictated to a male secretary. As Roosevelt spun about to leave, Churchill called him back, adding, the Prime Minister of Britain has nothing to conceal from the President of the United States. Edit. Wow. My first popular post. Source for this story. Cray. E. 1990. General of the Army. George C. Marshall Soldier and Statesman. Kindled. PP. 253. Cooper Square Press. He also supposedly met the ghost of Abe Lincoln one night while he was in the White House. And, yes, before you ask, he was nude at the time. Lincoln or Churchill? Who said it had to be just one? I wonder who was emancipated that night? Raphael the Italian painter, not the Ninja Turtle, is believed to have died from exhaustion from non-stop intercourse. Oh, so the bone till I croaks in his herb is literal. I'm an MC shredder but I get the feeling. I should pass it up to my man on the ceiling. Oh I am Michelangelo and I am a giant. Simone Bolivar had intercourse in every country he went with different women and it's explained with details in his biography. He was a really good dancer. I like how his dancing skills are in parentheses. As if that detail is what we needed to clarify him having intercourse in every country. Edit. Okay I get it good dancing equals good sex. I'm gonna take up dancing lessons. Governor Morris wrote the language to much of the Constitution, including the preamble. He also had a wooden leg because he broke it so bad it had to be amputated. The accepted story is that his leg was caught in the reins of his horse as they got spooked. But the rumor that went around was he broke his leg jumping from a window to escape the husband of a woman he was sleeping with. In revolutionary France, 
A crowd surrounded his carriage because they thought he was a French aristocrat. He took his wooden leg off and pointed it at them saying he lost his leg in the pursuit of liberty. He also died from complications after using a whale bone as a catheter. Did not see that ending coming gotta say. Neither did he. Neither did the whale. The first thing the father of microbiology, Anton van Leeuwenhoek, put under a microscope was semen. They understood that semen was integral to the creation of life but didn't yet understand the concept of single cell organisms. He fully expected to see tiny little humans in his juice. So yeah, the first thing he did was whack off on a slide and look at it. As I recall, he didn't do the deed himself. Mrs. Van Leeuwenhoek is credited as lab assistant. I read once that philosopher Jean Jacques Rousseau would pull his pants down and chase after women running backwards in hopes they would spank him. It was his kink. He would lurk in alleyways with his pantaloons around his knees and jump out as first at passing women in the hopes they'd be so frightened they'd lash out and spank him. He was a total dickhead but the mental image is hilarious. What a straight up duck. I did not learn this and I have a whole damn philosophy degree. They never teach you the important stuff. Edgar Allan Poe married his 13 year old cousin and would sleep in her coffin with her after she passed away. That's so on brand for him. I assume you mean sleeping in a coffin not being a pedophile. It all kind of fits. William the Bastard's family was torn apart when his two youngest sons dumped a chamber pot on the head of his firstborn, leading to rebellions, wars, and eventually his firstborn's lifelong imprisonment. Yeah that's siblings for ya. Firstborn. Rotting in prison. This is bull poop. They started it. You're the oldest. You should have known better. It's possible that 16th century samurai warlord Dusuji Kenshin was actually a woman pretending to be a man so that her clan could survive her father's death. Kenshin never married or had any concubines. Had to plan battles around regular monthly abdominal pain and is referred to in the notes of a Spanish missionary as someone's shire instead of Shio. Aunt. Not uncle. Reminds me of a certain Disney film. Ah. Wally is a great film. Edit. So apparently I messed up the name. I'm going to leave it. Oh. I meant Toy Story. Ben Franklin slept around and mostly stayed in France for the prostitution. He also wrote at length the benefits of sleeping with older women including their experience, lack of interest in anything exclusive, and inability to get pregnant. This man had it all figured out, to quote. He also thought all cats look the same in the dark. Mfa made his own money and was president of the OG anti-slave movement. Dude was ahead of his time. In school I was taught that Ben Franklin had a string of pearls that were several feet long. He would add a pearl to it each time he slept with a new woman. JC what kind of school did you go to? The school of hard cocks. Abigail Adams apparently spent a lot of time worrying that her son John Quincy Adams would jerk off a bang horse when he left the house, and advised against doing both in several letters to him. You must only do that at home. Son. Asterisk. Have a good day at school. Son. Don't forget your lunch. And remember if anyone offers you a ho just say no. Asterisk. I don't know how to say no to this. George Washington had severe hemorrhoids, to the extent that he couldn't even ride a horse into battle sometimes, and had to be pulled on a cart. Guess we now know why he was standing on the boat in that one painting. Mayo that could be. Paul Revere would ride from Boston to Newport R.I. to cheat on his wife. No, babe. For real. The Redcoats are actually coming. I swear, one if by land, and two in the stink. Oscar Wilde described himself as addicted to sucking cock and said it inspired him. Love is a sacrament best taken kneeling. Somewhat unrelated. But my favorite quote of his just may be, everything in moderation, including moderation, double quote, and x200b, an iconic lad, mine is I can resist everything except temptation. Mary Shelley, the author of Frankenstein, who also popularized gothic literature, used to meet up with her future husband, 
poet Percy Shelley, at the cemetery where her mother was buried. They would meet up and have angsty intercourse on her mother's grave BC she was goth as hell. Moreover, Frankenstein was inspired by her fascination with reanimation. The idea of bringing something dead back to life. When she learned about this idea, she was obsessed with the idea of bringing back her baby who died days later after being born. Thus sparking the idea of the monster of Frankenstein. That wasn't that unusual. Cemeteries also served as public parks until the 1900s. Her father disapproved of the two's union. Because Shelley was his apprentice. So they met in secret at the cemetery and had intercourse. Shelley was also married at the time and also had a child. His wife found out about the affair and committed suicide. Soon after, Percy Shelley and Mary Shelley eloped and had a baby, who died, and traveled Europe together. Percy Shelley proved to be a poopty husband and wanted to have multiple intercausal partners, including Mary's sister. When Frankenstein was first published, Percy Shelley initially took credit for the novel. I wish I had sources. But I learned all of this in an English literature class by a professor who wrote her thesis on Mary Shelley. Edit. Sorry for the rambling. I just find her so fascinating and never have an excuse to talk about this. Yeah the two of them traipsed across Europe and their kids kept dying. Like seriously multiple children of theirs died in various Euro locations. T. Honestly though. Keeping kids alive was a lot harder before 1900 than after. And Bonnie used to fight with one boob out. Just to show that not only are you about to get murdered, but you're about to get murdered by an 18 year old girl. Oh. This? This is my murder titty. But which titty is the murder titty? The last one you'll ever see. Gaius Julius Caesar was a huge player. He slept with at least one woman in every town he visited according to his soldiers. He slept with the Queen of Egypt. He slept with his rivals, Cato the Younger's sister. He also slept with a mother and her daughter, not at the same time. This was fitting as he claimed descent from Venus, the goddess of love and lust. I heard he was related to Bigasticus. It's said that Henry VIII exploded in his coffin. Dogs then licked up the Henry juice, as I mentioned in a different comment. This also happened to William I aka William the Conqueror. Church reeked of dead body for days. Kaiser Wilhelm II. The last German emperor wrote very intercausal letters to his mum when he was a teenager. Do you mean Kaiser Wilhelm II? Hitler took amphetamines to stop farting. Some historians think that's why he became increasingly erratic toward the end. He was in withdrawal. Ben Franklin had tons of intercourse with many many women. He even wrote some intercourse advice in some of his books. Mozart wrote songs about licking ass. Wait what about Mozart? Edit. I like how my most upvoted comment is me curious about Mozart licking ass. He wrote a choir song called. Lick Mitch I am Arsh. Lick me in the ass. That's amazing. He had an insanely dirty sense of humor. His published letters contain such gems as I now wish you a good night. Poop in your bed with all your might. Freud loathed cocaine. He had a friend with a morphine addiction. And he thought giving the guy cocaine would cure him. It did not. Here buddy. Let me replace your current addiction with a significantly worse addiction. Princess Diana and her Lagadget. A intercourse toy that she carried around with her when she went on diplomatic trips. She had even shown a table of foreign officials her toy as a prank on numerous occasions. She also believed it brought her good luck. One time she forgot to bring it with her and actually asked her bodyguard to go back to the hotel to fetch it for her. Not hidden in his home country, but not known by the rest of the world though, is the fact that H.C. Anderson left a mark in his diary every time he had masturbated, sometimes with a little note on the side, with his thoughts about the session. God, H.C. Anderson was a huge pervert. He would, according to himself, never actually buy prostitutes, but had lengthy conversations with them where after he would go home and jack off thinking about it. Huge pervert. More like a stingy cheapskate. Washington's wooden teeth were only part wood. Ivory and the teeth of slaves were part of his dentures. 
Helen Keller supported eugenics to the point of writing a journal in favor of refusing medical treatments to human babies with physical and mental disabilities going as far to state that they would likely become criminals if kept alive. Edit. I never expected to get more than 5. 000 upvotes on this but thank you for finding my contribution of interest. Lyndon B. Johnson had a huge dick and frequently whipped it out around various people. Edit. Thanks to whomever gave me my first ever award on this platform. On a post about one of our former president's dick no less. He even named it Jumbo. He used it to intimidate people and would have conversations in the bathroom while peeing. Everyone likes a good s'more. Gooey marshmallow and chocolate between two graham crackers. But graham crackers are a bit bland, aren't they? 19th century temperance preacher named Sylvester Graham. Preacher bland diets and veganism to be closer to God. His followers created crackers and named them after Graham. As the crackers were meant to minimize pleasure and stimulation. They were not supposed to tasty. They were supposed to be boring and dry as to not tempt people away from the Lord. But then they added cinnamon and boom. And sugar. Little late but worth a shot. Elizabeth Bishop and Robert Lowell. The poets. Had a 30 year letter exchange where Robert. While married. Swooned over Elizabeth after he initially met her. Declaring his love and want to propose for her all while being married and her blatant denial and uncomfortable lesbian anguish at this fact. He threatens suicide and lots of self-harm while she's just like haha let's read this book together and not think about romance. He was a manic cocaine freak and she was a crazy alcoholic lesbian with a toucan. She drank rubbing alcohol when denied conventional drinks. There's a great play highlighting these events called Dear Elizabeth. He was a manic cocaine freak and she was a crazy alcoholic lesbian with a toucan is my new favorite sentence. Spartan soldiers had gay intercourse with each other. A lot. Soldiers were taken as little boys and didn't see women since. They believed having gay intercourse would create a closer bond with each other. Edit. When they left the army and married, women would sometimes shave their heads and wear men's clothing to make the former soldier feel more comfortable. Go to kiss the homies goodnight. Anne Frank being a normal teen with a diary has some puberty parts. Here is an excerpt of one of those parts. Comma until I was 11 or 12. I didn't realize there was a second set of labia on the inside. Since you couldn't see them. What's even funnier is that I thought urine came out of the clitoris. When you're standing up. All you see from the front is hair. Between your legs there are two soft cushiony things, also covered with hair, which press together when you're standing, so you can't see what's inside. They separate when you sit down and they're very red and quite fleshy on the inside. In the upper part, between the outer labia, there's a fold of skin that, on second thought, looks like a kind of blister. That's the clitoris. Whoa, the edition I had in 8th grade didn't have that. Granted. It was a rendition in the form of a stage play, but a good page and a half had tape over it which when everyone eventually shined light through it, was just about her touching herself and they told us not to peel it off. Her father heavily edited her diary before releasing it and took out parts like that. Unedited copies came later. Most schools have you read the edited version for obvious reasons. French President Felix Faure died while getting his dick sucked colon. The whole press joked about his fate, with numerous word games. The lady he was with was nicknamed the Pomp Funeber, which is the name for funeral services in French and also literally means funeral pump. There was also, as one of the comments described, the phrase he wished to be Caesar, but was only Pompey. Pompey is Pompey in French and its pronunciation is identical to Pompey, which means pumped. Benjamin Franklin was the first known source of the phrase just put a bag over her head. John Batman, one of the founders of Melbourne, Australia, actually died of syphilis and lost his nose due to the disease. He ended up in a wheelchair and his wife left him when he got sick for a close friend. Scrotina got with a ton of prostitutes so that he could take care of his male urges and thus focus on his work. Leaving him the option of not taking a wife who may take him away from his work. A true man of science. 
Bro, you actually watched the whole video. I'd give you a high five if I was a human. Make sure to click the like button and subscribe for more great content. See you next time.